Fake News Fury uh, redo. And um, before I get into the content of this, um, I want to do a quick channel update. All of my, um, what I'm going to do with this channel is uh, keep things pretty much uh, PG so that it, the channel doesn't get eliminated. I already got a warning. I don't want to push my luck. So uh, my more controversial topics will be handled on my backup channel, Great Society Ministries. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Um, this John Bolton appointment can't be overstated. I know I've probably done two videos uh, mentioning this already, but he's going to shake up the White House staff. And I hope Trump supporters stumble upon this video because I think one of the videos that got me flagged uh, was a rant about Trump and how his supporters are essentially, um, well, I'm not going to repeat it because I don't want to get uh, flagged. But I knew from the very onset that, that Trump was um, uh, really an Obama 2.0. A lot of people, Alex Jones makes a big deal out of his um, getting out of the TPP. But you, the TPP doesn't matter in the long run because... If you, it doesn't matter if it's unilateral. If you get into these, uh, in, if you get into these international trade agreements, <laughs> there's no difference whether you get into a broad agreement with with several countries at once, or you do it one at a time. You're still going to have these lopsided agreements that help the um, globalization. Which my definition of uh, my definition of global globalization is the enslavement of the vast majority of the world's population. Because what's, what's happening, we see the effects of globalization. All it's doing is funneling the money and the um, goods in society to a uh, narrow, a very small minority, or even a cadre. Because I think the last, the last I heard, the top eight men in the world have more wealth than the bottom three billion. That's, that's an insane disparity. But that's not what this is about. Um, uh, the main point is Trump is has betrayed, or is, is just he's um the um the right wing version of Obama, which um if you look at the history of this country, uh, the United States, the presidency really lost most, if not um, all of its power when Woodrow Wilson betrayed the country and, and sold it to the Federal Reserve cartel in 1913 on Christmas. They they snuck the bill through and pass the uh, income tax and those sort of um, those other bills because what it's, what it's done is allowed, as I've stated in the past, for a um, group of bankers to print money, add a debt to the country out of thin air, and uh, made this top-down system. And, and, made, and, and really, the point of these banks is debt. Like, people are complaining, especially conservatives complain about the national debt but then when they get into office, they do the exact same thing that the uh, Democrats do. Government spending doesn't stop. We go further into that. And actually, it gets to me, it seemingly gets worse under um, Republicans because what they do is they keep the war machine uh, going. And they actually, like, look at Trump. He added money to the war machine. Uh, and I remember, uh, and this, this is from that previous rant that I took down. Bernie Sanders advocated free college. That would have cost $58 billion a year. Trump uh, up the uh, spending as soon as he got into the into office gave an additional 60 billion annually to the military there's your free college right there but it's a big joke uh Bolton is a dangerous warmongering maniac again if you look at some of his interviews he said that uh, Israelis should be able to settle anywhere um whether that be the West Bank Gaza he said that they should be able to build a home anywhere and I don't, actually, I don't think he stopped it at, at that. So, you know, all bets are off. He's going to replace the, the White House staff uh, probably with uh, more warmongering maniacs. But we saw this coming from day one. Uh, they actually made an office, I think, in the in one of the intelligence agencies. And they actually said it's headed by a Muslim man. And I uh, can't recall his name. But they, they called him, um, he's basically an Iranophobe. Um, oh, the name is escaping me, but... They, they've been talking about stepping up the pressure on Iran since day one. And in, and as you, we can see, they've already done that with their actions in Syria. Syria has been effectively partitioned. And they're trying to cut off um, the Iraq-Syrian border so the government can't um, resupply Hezbollah and um, Iranian-backed militias that really do, along with the Syrian army, do the heavy lifting against these Salafi terrorists that are backed by um, the West and um, the um, 
Gulf monarchies and the colony. We, this is serious, uh, and it can't be, it can't be, it can't be overstated. What's what's happening is that um, I think, and I hope, um, what the, the only hope we have, because what's going to happen otherwise is we'll get into a multi-trillion dollar war with Iran, because that's been the whole point of um, Trump's appointments from the very onset. He's been getting hawkish people, people who are um, Israel first, and people who hate Iran. Uh, you know, with, without any shame or hesitation, uh, Bolton also said that the um, the uh, North Korea talks are either going to be um, a uh, short waste of time or a long waste of time. Or, you know, or may he he's basically skeptical. I think uh, the North Koreans, and this is this will be to their detriment. The North Koreans are probably going to either get rid of their nuclear program. Uh, hopefully, they're smart enough not to get rid of their their nukes and their other technology, but. If they do, they, they could expect the, the same thing to happen to Gaddafi will happen to them because our friend uh, Ben Nate, and I'll leave you to look up who Ben Nate is, but uh, <laughs> when I talk about him, he'll you'll probably probably figure it out. But I like to call him uh, by this name because he wrote a book called Terrorism: How the West Could Win, and he had a hit list of countries including Cuba, North Korea, and, and Iran and Iraq and Libya. In Yemen, and most of those countries are off the list already. Anytime you get leaders in the global south, what's what a lot of people like to call the third world, but the global south, so uh, South America, Africa, and, and um, you know Oceania, we you know, include which includes like Melanesia and these other places. You when you get leaders that actually care about their people, want to improve their lives, they get assassinated or, or targeted or just they, otherwise eliminated. It doesn't have to be assassination all the time, but they get eliminated, and um, it's 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 really sad. But you know those countries that I named that are on the hit list. The main reason they're on the hit list is because they have no BIS uh, Rothschild Bank. Iran, I actually saw one of the um, Iran Iranian um, government uh, officials said they need to increase their ties with Russia and China. And here's the, here's a major point I want to make. And, and I had people who disagree with me on my earlier videos that I had to remove. If Russia and China are not a false opposition, so in other words, if Russia and China want to be independent uh, and, and actually are actually legitimately going against the total hegemony, of um, the U.S., which really is the uh, Bank Bank for International Settlements, the the United States, our country, unfortunately, is just um, in our military. If you, it's just hitmen for these goons. You're just uh, tax collectors for these um, international bankers. But if Russia and China were serious about asserting themselves, they're, they're, the Iranian government should not have to make overtures to increase their cooperation. There should be a NATO-like pact with Russia and Iran right now that says, hey, if you attack this country, it's an attack on us. There, there, there should be no question about that because if you're Russia or China, especially if you're Russia, you don't want the United States right on your border because if Iran falls, the United States will have access to the Caspian Sea. And they'll be able to attack you from your uh, soft underbelly, quote-unquote. They'll be able to put assets... You know, in the south southern portion of the Caspian Sea and in Azerbaijan, because if Iran falls, another thing that'll happen is the Caucasus region will be vulnerable um, because of uh, Azerbaijan. Because Azerbaijan pretty much um, is playing a balance between the Iran and um, the the West, be because it has to, it has no choice. It can't totally go against Iran, but it can't totally support because it'll be targeted. So, if Russia is put up a shut up for Russia or China. Iran should not have to um, feel like it's under threat, uh, especially by the likes of um, MBS or Ben Nate in the colony. There should actually already be a NATO-like pact, as I've stated, where an attack on Iran is, is an attack on either two. Because if Iran falls, that's the last domino. The other two countries that don't have a BIS-controlled central bank, they're, they're strong. Uh, mor they're, the morale is strong in Cuba and in North Korea, but... They, they don't have the resources. Iran is the last resource-rich country that is not um, a part of this uh, co this banking cabal, which which is why I think 
And I hope I'm wrong, but I think Russia and China will hang Iran out to dry. Iran better be ready to defend itself by any and all means because we have this maniac, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, Mohammed bin uh, uh, Bull, you know, <laughs> Bull crap. <laughs> He's actually lobbying so they can have uh, more nuclear weapons because uh, I've read things in the past that said Pakistan has given uh, Saudi Arabia at least three nuclear missiles. I can't recall from where I read that, but... He actually wants uh, our government to build nuclear plants throughout Saudi Arabia so they can have nuclear material. And uh, you mark my words, that material will either go straight to Israel so they can make the nukes or the um, Salafi maniacs in Lawrence Arabia will make the nukes themselves. But I'm up on time, and that's it for now. This has uh, been a, another edition of Fake News Fury. Uh, thanks for watching.